Business Matters is brought to you in part by Lionberger Construction. Hello and welcome to Business Matters, a program that strives to explore that subject from a variety of viewpoints and scenarios, featuring interviews with the people helping to grow the jobs, the economy, and the Blue Ridge region, because business matters. On today's show, we'll focus on hiring and recruiting challenges in the region. It's difficult sometimes to find all the people needed to fill the jobs that are open, and is a skilled workforce readily available? My guests are Tim Saunders, the Business Engagement and Outreach Coordinator for the Virginia Career Works Central Virginia Workforce Development Board, Brian Wells, the General Manager for Hotel Roanoke, and Kelly Woolwine, CEO and co-founder of Evolution HR. And gentlemen, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having us. Let's get right to it, Tim, Tim, let's start, start with Tim, and Tim Saunders, no stranger to, to TV. Uh, tell us exactly what Virginia Career Works is, and what's the relationship between VCE and the Virginia Employment Commission? So Virginia Career Works is a relatively new name in the state. It's a name that was given to what we call workforce development efforts, and it's so much more than just the VEC. They're a very important partner in what we do. But Virginia Career Works brings together all of the state agencies and nonprofits that provide employment services in the state. And we're brought together so that we're on the same page, so that we're doing things uh, together collectively as a unit that will strengthen the workforce in the state. You know, I wanted to ask you before we jump into some other questions, uh, the, the Virginia Career Works, you can help people with their unemployment uh, claims, correct? So an individual could come to a Virginia Career Works Center. We do have what we call comprehensive centers in virtually every city in the state. There is one in Roanoke, there's one in Lynchburg. You can find one in a lot of our communities. And yes, an individual could come there and receive assistance with filing an individual, uh, their first time unemployment claim. But I think there's a misconception. I think some people see the name Virginia Career Works and they think that's the unemployment office. Right. And we're trying to tell people, look, this is a place where you can come and find so many resources that will help you find a job. There are individuals in these centers that can help you with your resume. There are people who can coach you for uh, interviewing. If you're preparing to go on a job interview, you can get some skills there that will help you uh, ace that interview. And so many more things too. We can connect you with training resources. In some cases, we can actually pay for training. We have federal money available for certain individuals to help them pay to train for a high demand career in Southwest and Central Virginia, and if they live in another part of the state there as well. So you're still sort of getting that word out about VCE at this point? Uh, yes, VCW. absolutely. We are still trying to make people aware that this resource exists in our communities, because again, it is something fairly new. We rolled this, we call it a brand, out in 2018 to sort of give us an identity so that people would know that, uh, again, these resources exist. It, they've been around for a while, not for a long time, but uh, ever, certainly ever since the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act was passed by Congress in 2014, uh, these resources have been here. And now in Virginia, we are trying to let people know that, hey, you have a place that you can come in your community to help you find a job and be successful in that job. And not just any job, but a high demand job in your community, one mm -hmm. that is truly needed for you to fill. Speaking about jobs, Brian Wells, the GM at the Hotel Roanoke, and actually, Brian, a conversation you had sort of helped lead to this, this uh, segment um, about the difficulty you've had at times just hiring employees to work at Hotel Roanoke. Uh, what have been the challenges? Is it about pay, Brian? Is it about a shortage of applicants, or what's it about? Well, we, we, we think right now it's a couple different factors. Uh, you know, first of all, just general safety, guest-facing, public-facing positions. It's not something somebody's going to try for the first time, um, but we see that loosening up. Uh, success of the vaccines, uh, it's very helpful. Uh, second, secondly, we, we think that um, there is a little bit of a decision that the individuals make based on unemployment collection, um, based on income at the position they have. In, in hospitality right now, we really, been uh, reduced from a business standpoint. So uh, we just need more regular business, which we're, we're at that point now. So uh, we're really launching into a hiring phase. Uh, we've had a bunch of new hire orientations, implemented some strategies on recruiting. Um, and, and one of my points to people is you, you need your own personal recovery plan. It's not, it's not just the government recovery plan, but 
right now, if you're looking for a job, you're in a driver's seat. There's lots of jobs, lots of opportunities. And I think people have to figure out what's important to them. Do you, do you need a retirement plan? Do you need uh, great medical benefits? You know, do you need great travel benefits that hospitality can provide? So those are the kind of things we use for tools in our toolkit. I'm just wondering, did the hotel industry in general, when things really clamped down last year, Brian, and a lot of those jobs went away, at least temporarily, did, did some of those workers that would normally work in that industry find jobs in, elsewhere? Yeah, we had to unfortunately furlough um, and eliminate some positions in uh, the people that were furloughed. Some of them did move on and find other careers and other jobs. Uh, many, many of them uh, continue to stay in touch with us. Uh, they want to come back. Uh, they love you know, working at Hotel Roanoke and Conference Center. So uh, our group business is coming this summer and uh, we're building uh, the team back up. So is that, is that, uh, is the labor market shortage and competitive hiring markets, has it impacted lower wage uh, occupations in restaurants and retail and any of you can join in, but has that labor more, what is the labor market shortage done to the in industry? Is it driving wages up or, or what? Sure, well, let me make a quick comment. You know. Uh, Commonwealth of Virginia minimum wage increase May 1st, uh, another one January 1st. Uh, we adopted a strategy of uh, going straight to the January 1st, 2022 minimum wage. So we adjusted our entire wage scale here uh, and, and some compression at those lower positions wasn't there. So uh, everybody virtually got an increase um, and we, we adjusted that. We feel it's working for us. Uh, we're, we're a leader in the community for lodging and hospitality, and uh, our current compensation uh, is matched with that. Hmm. Uh, Kelly Woolwine, uh, talk about what talk about the con concept behind Evolution HR uh, since you got it off the ground, Kelly, several years ago, and then but what you're finding out about the reality of today's labor market. Well, the the vision is to uh, not just process bodies and provide labor, uh, but the, the vision behind Evolution HR was to also be a positive influence on the employers, um, provide feedback, provide help and influence to them uh, based on what we're hearing from the employee side. And then really most of all, to be a positive influence on the employees themselves. You know, we believe in an equation there, current routine equals current result your W-2, your, your bank account balance, your resume, those are all results. And if you're not crazy about the results you're getting, look no further than your own routines, what you do day in and day out. So the idea was to bring our experience uh, from our internal team and try and be a positive influence on the employees that we hire, thereby being a positive influence on the employers that we serve this is a, a, an unprecedented, unique time. I'm sure I don't have to tell anybody that. Right now, we're just really swamped with demand. Uh, good news is businesses are doing well and they're busy being busy and they need help. That's great, we love to see that. Uh, but the unemployment rate is low. And, and as Brian said, there are, let's say in some cases, there are forces at work that, that maybe make this a good time to take a little break. Um, but I think what, what we're seeing too in the hourly wage pool especially uh, is you find that a lot of people uh, not sure what, what they wanna do with their, their life next. I mean, everybody's kind of hitting the reset button right now coming off the past you know 15 months and what they should know is you don't have to know the answer to that question. I mean, the job market uh, situation is unprecedented. If you wanna try something, if you wanna get into a certain field, the, the door is open. Uh, employers are opening their minds to trying people uh, who maybe don't have the experience they used to be able to demand. They are a little bit more flexible on remote versus working on site. Uh, you know, as Brian said, as a candidate, you're in the driver's seat and working with a company like ours, you can actually transition, you can try some things, I hate to say it, but without consequence. In the past, if you wanted to work somewhere three months, six months, if you didn't like it, you move on, you come across as a job hopper, but 
the truth of the matter is if you worked three months in a particular field right now and and it wasn't really for you you could take a week off we we, we could easily place you in another job and and you keep moving i mean there, there's really no consequence to that because the 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 demand side of the job market is so robust we've never seen anything like it and and i'm talking all fields top to bottom up and down the food stream food stream mm-hmm. whether it's controllers programmers it world forklift drivers welders warehouse uh, the the food and beverage industry, you name it, you've got choices. If you want to work, you can work today. And Tim Saunders, uh, this is one of the things I think Virginia Career Works can do is go to access training the people, short term training, hook them up with maybe even a community college program, things like that. Yeah, this is something that we do all the time, and it's certainly relevant right now. We we've been encouraging people throughout the pandemic, especially those that were working in uh, the retail restaurant service industry. When those businesses were closed last year, we were really trying to encourage people to take advantage of the federal funding that's available to help people transition into more high demand careers, which in the Lynchburg area, the area that I represent, those high demand career fields are manufacturing and healthcare. A lot of people think that manufacturing isn't nearly as strong as it is, it's a misconception. Manufacturing in the Lynchburg area in particular is very strong and you can make very good money without having a lot of experience and training uh, for some of the jobs that are available. And if you do have the training, then you really can have, uh, you can really find some good wages in that area. Mm -hmm. So we try to encourage people to take advantage of that, you know, especially if you're someone right now that's facing employment barriers or you're in a low income situation, you probably qualify for the federal funding that exists to pay for your training. And you mentioned CVCC or you mentioned community colleges, Virginia Western certainly too in Roanoke, you know, all the community colleges across Virginia, uh, you can be trained at those schools, but there are also other private vocational schools as well. Virginia Technical Institute in Alta Vista is another one where you can go and learn some of the the trades like being an electrician, which believe it or not, that's a very lucrative career field in our area. An individual without a whole lot of experience can make over $50,000 a year as an electrician. And there's high demand for that job right mm-hmm. now. So yes, um, we are encouraging people to take advantage of those opportunities. And I think a lot of people have. I think that's something that is sort of, you know, um, making this problem or making this uh, hiring challenge maybe a little bit worse right now. I think last year when a lot of businesses were closed, workers did pivot. You had people that were working in restaurants, maybe as servers, and they didn't have a choice. They needed to maintain their income. And so they found work in other areas. I have a relative that worked as a server for a restaurant for a very long time. She enjoyed that career. uh, And it was something that she expected to do for a long time. But when that was taken away, she didn't have a choice. She had to find a career doing something else and she transitioned into something related to real estate. And she now has found that she really enjoys that. She's making more money. She has a more consistent Monday through Friday schedule. And so she's sticking with that. And I think a lot of workers are in that boat. And that's why I think you see so many restaurants in particular right now struggling to find workers. We were already facing a worker shortage before the pandemic because you've got a lot of older workers, baby boomers that are aging out of the workforce. And there aren't as many younger workers, millennials and Gen Z coming into the workforce to make up for that. And so if you take the worker shortage that existed and the fact that many workers that had traditionally been working in those service related industries, finding work in other areas, you've got a big problem right now. You've got a big shortage of workers, especially in the service industry. I mean, I just wanted to echo something Tim said there that that we're seeing in Lynchburg, especially but Lynchburg, Roanoke, and the New River Valley, uh, because of the worker shortage, there's also a great opportunity in manufacturing, light manufacturing and warehouse for men and women to, to get a crack at leadership positions and another layer up from, from what they may have had access to 15, 20 months ago uh, because of the worker shortage, you know, employers will take some light manufacturing experience and give you a shot at being a lead, working as a lead on the line or working as an inspector on the line or a supervisor in the warehouse, things like that, that you might not have had access before. So again, uh, we see it, especially in Lynchburg, our manufacturing partners are 
doing very well there and they have a high demand and, and doors are open for opportunities that, that maybe you wouldn't have had before. Mm-hmm. So I hope people will look and take advantage of that. I was just gonna say between this studio and uh, my other, my other workplace, it's a, a, a quarter mile stretch of Star, on Starkey Road. There were four help wanted signs out yesterday on the roadside and most of them were for restaurants or service industries. So uh, I'm just wondering, Brian Wells, when you try to hire people for Hotel Roanoke, especially as things start to ramp up and the masks come off and all that, is that gonna be something that you're gonna have to battle with? You know, battling restaurants and whatever for employees. Yeah, it's pretty competitive, uh, especially culinary positions, uh, uh, room attendants, you know, cleaning rooms, uh, pretty, pretty short labor force right now. Um, we we have uh, again some great incentives and and have changed our pay structure, which is a big help. Uh, but the Hotel Roanoke's been uh, offering career opportunities in the hospitality industry since 1882, and many of our associates are long-term associates and uh, love the culture, uh, love the role the hotel plays in the community. I find a lot of pride in that. Um, so you know we we really are selling that people join our team, and uh, you know we had. Uh, uh, like I said, a lot of success over the last 30 days, uh, onboarded a, a number of new associates who are really succeeding. Business is improving. We've got a brand new Pine Room expansion. Uh, so uh, food and beverage employees are actually doing really well right now because uh, we have a great high volume. Um, so they're, I mean, their hourly wages are well in excess of $20 an hour. Yeah, I'm just wondering, since you, you made me think of another question, are uh businesses that rely heavily on service workers where it's very competitive brian are they going to have to work on their their corporate culture or their company culture and make you know make people feel feel more like family that they're part of the an important part of the business going forward i'm just wondering if they're going to have to make people feel like they're not just a part of the machinery but more like a part of a family in order to maybe hold on to more people you know uh, kind of create more loyalty yeah i mean pe- people are your brand most of the time. Uh, I mean, they're the ones making the memories, providing the service, and uh, it's critical that everybody feel like a full partner in your business. And, and we have uh, something we call Be the Difference. And we promote a Be the Difference culture, Be the Difference for each other, Be the Difference for our guests. Um, and that's worked out really well, uh, paired with Hilton, uh, Make It Right philosophies. Uh, you know, the Hotel Roanoke's always been a, a leader and uh, we'll continue to do that. I wanted to ask, uh, and, maybe, and on, go ahead. And sorry on, on that, no, one, go ahead. Gene, that is not just the hospitality business. When we have uh, our employees move on uh, from an employer, that's the A number one reason. The pay you're gonna find is fairly consistent. Uh, there's, there's a lot of opportunities there. It, it's usually not about the money. 90% of the time, someone is leaving their position because of something cultural. It's the environment, whether it's communication, the leadership environment, or just the culture in general, uh, it, it just didn't feel great being there. And, and that's going to put them back in transition. Uh, and the people who are staying, that's what they report back to us. They're, they're not telling us they're staying there because of 15, 16, $20 an hour. They're staying there because they like the environment and the people that they work with and the way they're treated. It is the A number one uh, and, and really, that's probably the number one best place for employers to invest right now is because you don't have to spend a ton of money to do that. You just invest intellectually. You talk to the employees, you treat them well, uh, open the door from a communication standpoint to hear what's on their mind, and they will stick around. Yeah, some I, I, I agree with you, Kelly. I mean, uh, for us, it's about being really positive uh, on the floor with the team, kind of doing battle every day. You know, um, you know, we're not we're not office bound here, um, and and that means we're all working together as partners, and it's critical. That's right, and you said it, Brian. I mean, pe- people are the number one asset; they're the brand, and I think there are some employers um, maybe still hanging on to a little bit of an antiquated notion that you're fortunate to have a job, you're fortunate to have this place to come to work. Uh, but that that's not the reality. The people are your greatest asset if you're an employer. You know, you you got to value them beyond the hourly wage. It's it's just gonna take more 
uh, to bring out their best. And it's worth it when the culture is right and you're helping people reach their potential. You, you are so much better as a business. It's, and, and now is the time to do that because that is the one thing that an employer can control is trying to harvest better culture and, and better retention. Hmm. Yeah, as someone who's worked in a variety of environments, including many years in manufacturing, it is amazing how much if you just feel that the, from the top on down that they're, that they're on your side and that they value you, that it makes a lot of difference. Um, I wanted to ask maybe Tim and, and Kelly, especially um, how much uh, when people trying to, when employers are looking for jobs, how much at this point is a lack of technical education or even a two-year degree or a certificate or a four-year degree in some cases, how much of that is impeding people from getting jobs? I just read something that, like in the Roanoke metro area, we have fewer college, college graduates here than on average. Well, how much is that lack of education hurting the workforce in Central and Southwest Virginia? Well, I'm hearing more and more from workers, or from employers, I should say, that they're willing to hire workers who would be considered trainable, which says to me that they're getting a lot of applications from people who aren't qualified to do the job. And so they're really just looking for someone who can come in, will have a good attitude, and will have the aptitude to learn the job while they're doing it. So I would say, yes, this, this is a problem. It has been a problem for a long time. And that's why you know we have been working in the workforce development system with our training partners at the Virginia Community Colleges and others to try and build programs that will address some of these issues with uh, our employers. We're trying to speak with businesses across the state and find out, okay, what is it that you're not getting from your applicants? What skills do people need before they apply for a job here to make sure that they're going to be successful uh, in your workplace. And I, I would say that's absolutely a big issue. Yeah, I, I, I would say we still see that. Um, there are some fields and some positions where employers, let's be honest, are a little more desperate and they are willing to, to train up and take some chances or even separate out a position where the the most specific technical aspects will fall on another desk, but but maybe some 50 or 60% of that position's duties will fall to someone who doesn't necessarily need that degree. Um, but also really due to the pandemic, we've seen a lot of companies who wouldn't have done it before uh, are opting to find people who will work remote. They're going outside of our area and allowing them to work from home so that they can still uh, get that college degree or get that technical experience they want. They'll just have them working from Raleigh. They'll have them working from Dallas. They'll have them working from Fairfax, um, which is a shame. I'd like to see more of that stay in this area. Um, but I think what you're saying is true, Gene, that, that challenge still exists. And, and it's more about, it's, it's not that we're not producing college degrees in this area and in the state, because we are. Uh, where we're really a leader is exodus. Uh, those degreed men and women feel like they have to go somewhere else to use them. Right, we're, uh, so, we're, we're, still, we're still seeing that then. Does. We're still seeing that then. Well, I know my own son, he, he's got his, just got his aerospace degree and he wants to head off. But I'm just wondering, conversely, Kelly, are we seeing in your recruiting efforts maybe where companies that are based in Raleigh or DC are willing to let people work here remotely? They, they are. I mean, it, it, it's, we've never seen this before, you know, the, um, the threshold that companies are crossing into for remote uh, employment, but it, it's generally working the other way, right? Ra the, the people we know in Raleigh are not having the same type of, of, of issue as we are here. It's, uh, they're still facing the same challenges, but I think it's tougher here for certain types of jobs or technical experience. You're seeing a lot more employers here in Roanoke have to have people working from North Carolina than you are employers in North Carolina having to hire people in Roanoke. We only got a couple of minutes left. Let's kind of go round robin a little bit. What, what do you see as things really start opening up? And I just think there's going to be all kinds of pent up demand for services and traveling and whatever. Uh, are, where are we going to find all these workers? Uh, take about 30 seconds each. Brian, let me start with you. Yeah, you know, uh, we're, we're, I don't know, 30, 40% uh, into uh, our goal of uh, hiring. 
you know, our, our, our challenge is timing. Um, you know, we're gonna ramp up our group business this summer. So uh, we need full-time employees then, but we need to get them in now and get them trained and get them onboarded again for new protocols uh, and procedures, especially with sanitation and service uh, post pandemic. Um, but you know, we're cautiously optimistic that we've got a good strategy that we've put in place with our uh, jumping on the new minimum wage early uh, age scale adjustment at the property. Um, and so far uh, getting a lot of success uh, and interest on that. If we can just communicate to people and reaching out is really difficult. I mean, we actually took up some digital display billboards from Lamar advertising around the Valley, which, you know, we, we didn't mind doing because it kind of feels like uh, food and beverage marketing and hotel marketing in addition to recruitment hiring. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we, we really have been trying new things um, and, you know, more, more job boards, the better. And uh, we're, we're in contact with uh, Tim and his organization uh, to make sure our positions are listed. Um, so that's, that's gonna be very helpful. For so us. real quickly, Tim, people can go to Virginia Career Works and find information. Absolutely, yes. In their local area, again, there's a Virginia Career Works office in just about every corner of the state. And they can be connected with what we call the Virginia Workforce Connection, which is a platform where businesses like Brian's list their positions and very often, not only are the positions listed, but so is the pay. It's a very transparent website where you can get a lot mm -hmm. of information about the employer and what they're offering. So yes, we highly recommend that people check that out as a resource. But you were asking where we're gonna find workers. I think we're gonna see a lot of people that are currently on the sidelines slowly come back into the workforce. And I think people forget there are a lot of individuals who are still having to stay home because they're parents and they're having to take care of their children. Right. Children have not, in large measure, gone back to schools yet. You know, school is not normal uh, or what we would consider normal in mm. many parts of the state yet. You know, schools are still letting out. I know in Bedford County, where I have a lot of family, uh, the schools, elementary schools, are sending students home at 1.30 in the afternoon. Right. My brother, every day, has to spend his lunch hour going and picking up his kids and taking them to a relative. Uh, he luck He's lucky that he has a relative that can watch them, but so many parents don't have that option. They don't have the ability to just take their children somewhere right now. Daycares are not open. So that's a component of the, uh, that's that's something that's going to have to come back fully before I think we're going to start seeing a lot of workers come back to the workforce right. as well. We're going to have to leave it there. Tim Saunders, uh, Brian Wells, Kelly Woolwine. Looks like you'll be busy this summer. Uh, gentlemen, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having Thank us, Gene. If you have any questions or show suggestions, email us at businessmatters at blueridgepbs.org. And if you missed any of our previous episodes, you can watch them on our website at blueridgepbs.org. Thank you.